Quite right, Ronald agreed. Fear of what we don't know cannot stop us from acting on what we do know. The ink has cured other wounds. I say we give it a chance. I love that quote because he says, fear of what we don't know cannot stop us from acting on what we do know. Mm. And that's a great place to start with uh, the mm. talk of anxiety and OCD. Mm. So when we were doing this live, I had the graphic of your cover, but you have a beautiful green cover. Oh, I can, great for <laughs> I can hold up the graphic there. There it is, perfectly suited. Um, and JD wrote this um, about his, uh, what just his journey with OCD and anxiety and um, it's around the am I right in that it, you kind of centered it around the armor of God right right yeah uh, which was an interesting pairing for me I'd never really put those two together but um, it was really helpful for me and it actually it it reframed the whole thinking about the armor of God for me in a, a new positive way that yeah, that was actually a really good exercise for me. So that's awesome. That so so how did this have the fallout? You know, you say um, it was like your brain was broken, um, and yeah. it feels like your brain is eating you alive. You yeah. know, yeah. Um, so talk about that. What happened? Yeah. So um, I I hit a point. This was this was about. 10 years into pastoring where I felt like for, for most of my adult life, I was pretty uh, disconnected from my emotions, whatever was going on inside. I, uh, I just, you could ask me at any time how I was doing and I couldn't really tell you except maybe tired, uh, you know, or I, I really wasn't very aware of, of my yeah. feelings, but your body is keeping track of that for you. And, um, and so I, I hit this point where, where I just, uh, all of a sudden it was like, my, it, like, like you said, it was like my brain broke. It felt like I, yeah. I just had this torrent of intrusive thoughts that I couldn't control. And it felt yeah. like, felt like I was just spiraling and spinning and didn't know what was happening. It really scared me. It's, yeah. it's, it's, um, it's really, tough when you're, when you feel scared of your brain or you're trying to outrun your brain. And I don't even know what that means, but it was, it was just, um, yeah, it was just out of control. So I went on a, I went on a walk with a friend of mine who happens to be a therapist and, uh, and I'm just blubbering. I'm just like, I can't stop talking and telling him all, all that's going on for me. And I, and he's just listening and I get, yeah. get down to the end and I say, ah, I am not an anxious person. Yeah. And he looked at me and he just laughed. Right. And, and I'm like, it really caught me up short to go, oh, other people can see something in me that I'm not even seeing that I'm, I'm carrying around all this anxiety and I don't even know it. Sure. And, and he was right. And um, that, that kind of sort of set me on this journey of, of really going, uh, what's, what's going on underneath for me and seeing that, yeah, in fact, I was carrying a lot that I didn't, yeah. that I didn't realize. And um, yeah. so, um, yeah, so it's been kind of an, an ongoing process ever since, ever since then. So, wow. Wow. You know, I, yeah, I had kind of a moment like that with mm -hmm. my therapist who was just a gift from God, <laughs> but mm -hmm. um, I was like, I was just sobbing and I said, I'm so afraid that God is going to take me through suffering. And she mm -hmm. said, you are. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> because this is after nine months of just not being able to drive and not being able to get through a shower with all the physical anxiety symptoms it was insane it really does you know when you said you get afraid of your brain um i was never suicidal but i know how people commit suicide it's because you get sick of fight fighting it yeah you know yeah. it's just every day is a fight against yeah. your own brain yeah oh so um, yeah. when you had the fallout, um, was there anything that, um, and I mean, you don't have to talk about anything if it's too personal, but um, one thing that was so helpful for me was learning, you know, that this brain thing, that it's pretty much, the, it, it's more common in people that have addiction that, run, and run, that runs in their family, and mm -hmm. I have alcoholism and stuff that's been in my family, um, 
And so you're more likely to have a brain like this. Um, mm. And hormonal change, trauma, and just big life changes in general can kind mm. of start that. Uh, it's kind of like a flare up, you know? So was there any sort of like change or um, hormonal change? Mm. <laughs> I don't see you being pregnant or anything, but yeah. uh, you know, any yeah. change or trauma that uh, kind of... Would that's a good that's a good question i feel i feel like it was more cumulative for me of reaching a tipping point more than it was you know um i i always there was always an inner tension for me and being a pastor of like not not really feeling at home in the role and yeah. and so i i'm st and i'm still a pastor so yeah. but like um the uh, I think there were a lot of aspects of that that were that were pressing in on me with nowhere to go. Yeah. Uh, I also think, honestly, it was tendencies already there. I mean, I can look back to when I was uh, in fourth grade, yeah. and and I I I know that I had undiagnosed OCD. Sure. My, my brain was functioning the same way as a fourth grader. Like that's immediately where this whole situation took me to was back to fourth grade. And yeah. so, which also makes sense as why then that would be a therapeutic kind of writing for me to be writing for that age. Cause sure. that's, um, that, that was the link there, but. Um, and you, that's when you started reading too. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That makes sense. That's awesome. So, um, was was is there anything that you would talk about that um, went on in fourth grade that maybe other people could think about that uh, maybe that happened to me too? Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, uh, I I had this. Uh, <laughs> well, it, there was a there was a really strange sequence of events that that happened that. Um, <laughs> Oh, it's kind of a long story, but uh, yeah, I, so I, I was the only kid my age most of the time in church as I was growing up. Sure. And uh, so I spent a lot of time in the church library by myself. You know, my parents, my parents were very devoted to going to prayer meetings and Sunday night service all, all the time. So uh, if prayer meeting was going on, I, I would get, um, I would get thrown in the library. I mean, I would, I, I'd like to read, so I would, it was yeah. fine, but I would, yeah. it was by myself sitting in the library. And, and then when I was in fourth grade, I discovered that the, the church library had a little, uh, section on, on sex. Okay. And ch Christian books, you know, that are like very clinical, but um, but still felt like very very um, kind of forbidden for me. So anyway, yeah. uh, I was I was in the library before church on a Sunday night, and uh, and it was time for the service to start. And so my somebody came to get me, and I had been looking at this book that I was very curious about, but I wasn't done with it. But I I was like I can't I can't check this out like and leave a trail that I'm looking at this book so yeah. I had my big bible with this soft cover on it so I'm like I'm gonna sneak this book into the I'm gonna sneak it out and instead of checking it out because I can't I can't you know write my yeah. name on a card no so yeah so yeah so I've got it in tucked inside my bible so we go in and I'm sitting in the pew and and I uh I have my bible down under the the pew in front of us and there's a woman in the in this pew in front of us who doesn't have a bible and my mom's looking at me and she's like, oh, no. share your Bible with her. Oh, and I'm no. like, completely mortified. Okay. Just traumatic. And just very traumatic. Traumatic. Oh, my God. Totally traumatic. And so I'm just shaking my head and, and I, I somehow managed to pass it off that, that it's like, I'm just shy or, you know, don't want, I don't sure. know. I, I don't ever like, um, explain it there to my, so sure. <laughs> anyway, then, um, a couple months later, I wake up in the middle of the night in this just complete sweat going, I lied to my mom. Yeah. And it's about sex. And 
Yeah. I'm going to have to talk to her. This, this very deep conviction and humi- like, so just attached all this shame to it. And so anyway, I talked to my mom and all that and blah, blah, blah. But, um, but then what happened is it, it flipped me into this season of um, what I, I, I refer to as my seared conscience that, sure. that uh, I, I suddenly had to confess everything yeah. all the time. Uh, it's, it's, um, it, I'd say it's like a spiritual equivalent of hand washing, you know, where yes. I couldn't, I could not stop my brain. So I mm-hmm. shared a room with my brother and, and every night I, I would have to tell him, I'm sorry for anything that I might've done wrong today. Yeah. And, and he, I would insist that he told me, um, you know, I forgive you. Couldn't just say, oh, that's okay. Or whatever, sure. you know, and he's like, he's like five or six, you know, and I'm, yeah. Anyway, so it was just this sort of very tortured yeah. soul kind of tortured experience that went on for probably into junior high, you know, right. um, and and then it kind of faded out, and and so anyway, so I I, yeah. I think in OCD terms they refer to that as scrupulosity as yes, the, it's a horrible the, name. Why did they yeah. do that? Unbelievable. Well, it's pretty it's a pretty horrible thing anyway. It so. is horrible. But still, bad enough going through it. Why call it yeah. scrupulosity? Yeah. But, but no. Anyway, so that's the long story of the no, origin. No, thank you so much for sharing that. And that is so um, important. It's so important to talk about. Um, and that's exactly what happens. You know, for anybody that's watching that, you know, still thinks that OCD is about, you know, cleaning the house a lot, you know, right. um, that's what, <laughs> when people say I'm yeah. so OD, OCD, OCD about things, they think it's, you know, you're really organized or you're, really yeah, clean. right, right. Um, but I heard it explained like this once and I thought it was so good, um, that if two people are waiting on a train, have you heard this? <laughs> if two people are waiting on a train, one has OCD and the other doesn't, um, everyone, everyone, everyone has weird off the wall thoughts. Like, what if I just jump yep, yep. the train? Yep, okay. Yep. Or, or everyone is going to check out the book about sex. You know, I mean, just right, right. all of us do weird stuff and think weird stuff. Okay. But where the person without OCD has the thought, maybe I should jump in front of that train. It goes and they move along with their day. But there's this, it's from the amygdala. Okay. Um, this, this fear response to the thought of maybe I should jump in front of that train for the person that has the OCD brain, okay? Right. And so because of this fear response, it's so intense that they they think maybe I will jump in front of that train. Right. And, and the more they think about it, the more they're worried about it. And so they start compulsions um, that don't make any sense a lot of times. Uh, maybe they'll only take a certain amount of steps toward the train, only sit on certain seats, you know, um, have to tell their brother, you know, that kind of thing. And what that does is it alleviates that awful fear, that awful anxiety for a short time. Right. But it comes back. And the more yeah. you engage in the compulsion, the more and more the anxiety grows. And then it starts to just eat you alive. Yeah. Um, and that's what OCD is. You know, so it really is um, just torturous. It's full of shame. And I'm so glad that you talked about that. Um, You know, when um, I'm sure you've had so many people that have read your book and they were saying thank you so much for talking about this, especially in the church. Yeah, you know, it's really it's really interesting because it's so tied to anxiety and and we we read verses like be anxious for nothing that, that then, you know, for, for Christians, then it's added, it's got this added layer of, of guilt on top of the suffering that you're feeling like you shouldn't be feeling what you're feeling or there's something wrong with your faith. Uh, And so, yeah, it, it, um, it tends to be, you know, the place that feels like you should be able to go with whatever you're experiencing yeah. can tend to feel where you want to not share or be seen. So, right. um, yeah. For sure. Yes. And that's so important. And I love that it's being talked about more and that it's, um, yeah. 
accepted more, I guess, but because it really, I mean, it, it, I love the church and I love, and actually OCD was that whole year of therapy and everything at the same time, God just dropped the gospel on my head, like a ton of bricks. Mm -hmm. It was really a spiritual awakening, honestly, Mm -hmm. but, um, but yeah, when you're so anxious and then you get the verse of be anxious for nothing, you can't, you cannot. You know, you can't. Stop. Right, right, <laughs> right, right. I kind of hear that. I kind of hear that verse now more, less as a reprimand and more as reassurance. Like, like a parent, if if a parent sees a child who's afraid, you're not scolding them for being afraid. You're you're telling them they don't need to be afraid because you've got it. You know, uh, you're you're going to take care of them. And so it feels to me more like God's comfort and care than than His. Yeah. Uh, and don't you dare be anxious kind of thing. Right. Yes. I know. Um, or a confusion is from the devil. Like, you know, all right, these right, things, right. They're not helpful. They're not help- and people right, are trying right. to help, but it's yes. not helpful. Um, yeah. I just remember laying there and I just, I just said to God, I just feel so alone. I feel so, I felt far from God and I felt far from people, you know, um, until he did come to get me. Yeah. I I talk in the book about one time when I was, I was lying in bed and it felt like, it felt like uh, spiritual warfare, you know, my mind, it just feels like all these arrows coming at me. And so I'm praying that God will cover me with the shield of faith and all that. And, and I really didn't feel like it happened at all. Felt like I didn't get back to sleep the rest of the night. And, and, uh, and you know, the I think the whole experience was really um, good for my faith, actually, to kind of get some some false ideas taken sure. out of the way. And actually, you know, I think one of the things about about OCD that I feel like has been a gift to me has been here's this thing that I can't change about the way my brain works, and to go, right. uh, this is what this is what grace is for. It's for the things you can't fix yourself. Amen. And to go, Oh, oh, you know, because I mean, I've always preached grace, but it was like I needed it on a different level than I ever had before. And it it made it more real to me. Um, So so for that, you know, I'm I'm super grateful for having gone through what I have, you know, so that's so good. That's so it um, was there. Yeah. How do you how do you feel now about um, yeah, about anxiety and um, and faith. You know, like how, how you. Yeah, well, I feel I feel like I'm always my brain is always going to be my brain. This mm-hmm. is this is it's not going to magically go away. Um, and and I can I can trust that. Um, I I think I think for a long time I prayed for it to be eradicated. This the the anxiety to to just be taken. Yeah. away and and I feel like what I've learned is that I don't need God to take it away I I need him to take the power of it away that it sure. yeah. that that I can I can exist in the same room as the anxiety and go I know what this is I don't I don't need to be afraid of it and and it will subside it'll pass or whatever and and to you know I I have a, a chapter in the in the book called praying for my basal ganglia Yes, explain that because that was the original you know, name of the book. That's yeah, yeah. So that's the that's the part of I don't know if it's part of the amygdala or whatever, but it's sure. it's it's like the little gatekeeper that determines whether or not you have to do anything with a thought that's coming through. You know, yes. and and in a normal brain, like you said, it, it it's like a, a stream of consciousness. Mm-hmm. Everything can just fly right on by, and and it it's, it gets snagged up in the OCD brain in the basal ganglia and. Sure. And when I read when I read about that, it it felt like it gave me a name for something. And mm-hmm. and you know the the verse about Jesus being the name above all names. I go, that's not just people; that's named things. And so I could name this thing and bring it under the name of Jesus and say, you know, whatever whatever about this is for His glory. Like if if there's something in this for me to meet Him in the in the middle of it great if it if it can be used for him great yeah. i can i can be here with it i don't need it to go away to um 
to be okay. Oh, and sure. So I think, I feel like that has been good to go. Faith, faith doesn't mean you're, be, you're, yeah. you're supposed to believe so hard that, that all the bad things disappear. Oh, amen. You know, if, you know so. Yeah. That's so good that you put it. That, that's so good. That's so, and there's so many uh, things that you can do now uh, that you've been through therapy and that you go through it. Um, anxiety, it's not going to go away, you know, um, and, and your brain is the way it is, but you know how it is. So you can, you can yeah. identify with people that are going through it. That is priceless. You know, I think the, the first Sunday that I talked about what I was going through in church and let people in uh, is still to this day, probably the, the sermon that I had the most response from people saying, oh, I totally relate to that. Yeah. And, and, you know, when you're in it, you feel like you're the only person who's got any inkling of what you're going through. And, and sure. it's, I think that's part of the lie about it is that you're it's to isolate you, you know, and, really? and so, yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like it, it has given me a, a whole new set of eyes and compassion for people that are suffering and struggling in different yeah. ways that I before might have said, you know, been more dismissive about yeah. um, that, that, yeah, it looks different now, for sure. Yeah, amen. I know it um, uh, creates, you know, empathy for people that have, you know, alcoholism or drug abuse, because because you understand how you don't want to get up in the morning and ruin your day. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've never had alcoholism or drug abuse or, but I don't want to get up and ruin my day. And I did that for years <laughs> with, um, OCD. And I was, um, severely bulimic for 20 years, 20 years. And wow. it was so shameful. It's so shameful because, mm -hmm. you know, I, I feel like drugs and alcohol, they're awful and people die and it's terrible. Um, but it's almost more accepted <laughs> than, you know, eating sure. a pantry and throwing it up five times a day. And, yeah. you know, the, the good that's come from that is, um, I swear, you know, I mean, you were talking about with rejection, you know, getting rejected so many times and I'm mm -hmm. sure coming out or not coming out, but you know, this journey with OCD, it's humiliating a lot of times, mm. you know, you're yeah. extremely vulnerable. Right. And if right. you don't get any help, you find yourself in ridiculous situations, you know, like I would be, you know, telling the target cashier, I thought I was going to die, you know, I mean, mm. those kind of mm. things, and it's humiliating, yeah. but yeah. once you are humiliated enough, the possibilities are endless. Because yes. <laughs> Once you don't care yeah. what people think anymore. Yes. Yes. Bodies are endless. It's yeah. so good. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. I know you're. Yeah. I, I, you know, it's interesting. You talk about the ridiculous things and it's like your brain, your brain even knows that it's ridiculous at the time, like, which yeah. is what makes it humiliating because right. you, there's a part of you that knows it's not rational. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, to be able to, and then to be, vulnerable and have 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 people have grace for it is you know my wife has has been my my living basal ganglia <laughs> who can oh, who can come alongside me sometimes and i can i can hand her my folders of <laughs> of stuff that i don't know what to do and she just like and toss it out the window for me you know and and be a physical representation of of grace and yeah. so Good. Yeah, it's good. Amen. Amen. Um, yeah. You know, there's so many things I want to say, but you know, the is there any sort of um, like mechanisms or when you went through therapy, you know? anything to make you feel better like, like, like how how is it different now than it was uh when the fallout happened you know yeah what is hmm. i did a lot of journaling for one thing okay. um 
that was that was really helpful for me. Um, exercise is very critical for me. Oh, uh, and again, and part of <laughs> I, know, I hate it, and I was not I wasn't very good at it before. But it like yeah, the, partly true. just the you know uh, my and wife says really... emotion needs motion. Yeah. You know, and, and so being able to get stuff like something physical to get the anxiety out of your body, I think yeah. is, is helpful. Um, and yeah, talking, talking, like I have really a good community around me, a good set of friends who, um, you know, we can talk about anything and, and we do, and, and it's really good. And I feel, you know, I feel very, very blessed with that. Cause a lot of people don't have very many yeah. people that can, that can actually hold that safely. But, um, I think if you have safe people that, that makes a big difference. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. You know, um, with, with the, what are some of the things that, you know, you said that you kind of, um, relearned them, you know, about, the mm. Christianity and the Bible um, when this happened. Does that make sense? Yeah, you know, I think I think one of the things that I realized was how much of my faith or uh, or what I was calling faith was really self-reliance, where where I was really uh, counting on myself being able to do the right thing and 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 really kind of felt like um, what God what God appreciated about me was that he he didn't have to give me that much grace because I was I was you know pretty much towing the line and you know uh, as as if the goal is to need less grace instead of going you know Jesus said uh, he came to heal the sick and so if there's anything broken about me I want to get I want to get it out there as close to Jesus as I can rather than try to pretend I'm okay and be over here. And, and he's over here helping the sick people and go, well, if I'm pretending I'm not sick, then I'm not actually going to be over getting his attention or, you know, being engaged in what is there for me if I, if I take advantage of it. And, and so I think, I think beginning to shed some of the performance of faith was yeah. was helpful that I didn't even realize how much striving was there as opposed to I think I think even the way that I viewed the armor of God as this this book is about like yeah. you you read about it and so often you think that the real thing that's that it's telling us to do is to pick up and put it on like it's all on us that that's all our effort to as opposed to going what's the what is the armor actually what is the gift yeah. of it um, and I was really encouraged to learn that the the word there about picking it up and putting it on means to sink in, because um, that's such a more uh, relaxed or yeah. or it's it's just um, it's not you. It, it's not about me, you know, doing grabbing onto it and holding, yeah. you know, white knuckling it through. It's it's me sinking into what God has already got sure. there for me and you're the branch he's yeah the vine. yes 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 yeah he's the vine yeah. and we're the branch mm -hmm. um that's so good that's so good and that's that's so important you know it's such a blessing so it really is like a refining in a way you know? yeah yeah and for it's sure good. it's so good um you know i think of um that verse about um, he disciplines those he, those he loves differently too, because yes, yes, yes. You know, when he lets you go through those trials like OCD and anxiety, um, it's kind of like disciplining you like a soldier, you know? Yeah. And he yeah. only does it to the people he loves, you know? It says he disciplines right, right. those he loves. Um, yeah. And now you're so much stronger as a pastor um, mm -hmm. because you, you can put yourself in people's shoes you know and and you do mm. know that about that is the crux of the bible is that he's the blood on our door you know yep uh, yep it's not us. well and i i think you know there was one point where it really literally i was i was describing it as a like a thorn in my brain yeah. and i'm like oh this is 
Paul's thorn in the flesh, you know, and that where he learned about weakness being where God's strength shows up and going, yeah. oh, <laughs> yeah, that's kind of biblical there. And, and, uh, and uh, I, I do, I do feel like God used this whole thing to crack me open in ways that, that I don't know that, I don't know that anything else really could have that would have been less suffering. Oh, sure. Um, For so, sure. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. it is um, teaching you wisdom, you mm. know, um, yeah. and taking you through that fire, but um, it's just this, uh, it's, it's not imaginary suffering because you are suffering, but it's like you're in a fire that no one else sees. Right. It's right. So weird. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. One thing a bit um, was huge for me to, I needed to learn this and I'm so glad that God taught me it was um, how, how much not to follow my feelings, because that was a really big thing for me for years. And um, you even hear it, you know, follow your heart and go with your mm -hmm. gut. But when you have OCD, if you follow your gut and your heart, then it's leading you thinking that the Starbucks is going to be blown up in any second or, um, you know, that, um, a big obsession was of mine when I was a kid was, um, the return of Christ. I was like, oh, why yeah, is yeah. everyone excited about this? Why is everyone yeah. excited about the tribulation? And, yeah. <laughs> and everything I saw, everything yeah. I saw, because that's the, um, the proof you're, if you have this obsession, your brain to protect you starts finding proof. You know, yeah. so other, you see it, but no one else sees it. And it yeah. was always the end of the world. Yes. Oh. I have so, a funny story about that. I went back about that same time when I was, I was uh, about fourth grade. You know, they had shown that back in my era, that was the movie was The Thief in the Night, which um, was a, about the rapture. And, and, okay. um, and, you know, there's this one scene in it where the, somebody leaves their their electric razor in the sink and you know it's buzzing there and and the, they're gone and anyway i come home from church one day and and it had been a day when they had had an altar call up front to have people be prayed to be filled with the spirit and i i i had not gone forward and i was going oh i should have gone forward and all this and and feeling very convicted about that and we get home and so i go upstairs and I'm praying in my room to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And, and I'm super worried about that. And I come, I come downstairs and my family is gone. <gasps> and I don't know where they are and the cars are in the driveway. And I am sure that the rapture had happened. And they had just gone on a walk around the block and hadn't bothered to tell me. And so Meanwhile, anyway, you so it was all very that. spiritually traumatic, painful <gasps> thing about the traumatic. Yeah. Oh no! Oh no! That's the worst. <laughs> my mine started. My parents. You know, we were like the Simpsons. Okay. Oh, uh, so yeah, yeah. No, nobody went to church, but my yeah, parents yeah. were watching The Omen. Do you know what that is? Oh. About the Antichrist, and so yeah. I'm like watching the oh, movie man. with them, and I asked mom what it was about, and she took out the Book of Revelation and <laughs> my introduction to oh wow the Bible. Oh my gosh! I would wow. wake up sick in the middle of the night oh i'm sorry that's horrible i know it was it oh. everyone everything works together for the good of those who love god yeah <laughs> yeah you know so wow. it's all which all of us have you know these things but for the ocd mind it just sends you into a tailspin you start only doing things at 707 or you know 421 right, right. all these times you know yeah. um only you know all these rituals these rituals and compulsions um and you don't even know you're doing them. And that's why it's important yeah. to talk about because a lot of people have been dealing with this for decades, you know, and um, yeah. Yeah. and it's painful and they're anxious. And it just, it, it was other people sharing on the internet, you know, is when mm. I was like, that's, I'm going to the therapist. And that's when I mm. finally got help. Oh my gosh. Mm. And I don't, I, you didn't take med medication, right? Or you did? No, I, I almost, did and then um and then felt like i was i was in a spot where i was managing pretty well um but um 
yeah, I know it can be just the thing to, especially because it, it is, it, there is a chemical component uh, sure. in OCD that in brain function. So uh, yeah, I'm not opposed to it. I just felt like I was, I was managing. Okay. Sure. That, that's yeah. great. I, yeah. I take the medication. I took it and I take it. Yeah. Now. Um, yeah. I be, cause after 12, it was 20 years, <laughs> you know, and I, yeah. I waited way too long to get help mm. and I was just a mess. And mm -hmm. so I'm just, I'm just looking at the medication as a gift from God, but yes. I, just, I never take more than prescribed. It's just one pill a day. Um, it's never done anything, but make me sane. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I'm just, I take it as a gift from the Lord, you know? Yes. yes. Really is. He's the great physician and he can use medicine. <laughs> yes, I know. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but that was, um, talking about the feeling, the following of the feelings, you know, mm -hmm. and how he says, yeah. be strong and courageous, um, and, um, be anxious for nothing, you know, mm -hmm. but, you know, obviously when somebody cuts off your leg, if somebody cut off your leg, you can't say that doesn't hurt. You can't right. say anything. Right, that right. Hurt. It hurts, you know, and that's how anxiety is. It's just these intrusive thoughts and these things that you're not asking for and this this what what was the word we used? Torture that we're not yeah, asking yeah. for, you know, that we can't yeah. make it go away. Um, but you know, John three sixteen, somebody said this and I thought it was brilliant. Um, it says, For God so loved the world, he didn't have he he didn't have a warm and fuzzy feeling towards the world that he gave. It says he just gave his only son, you know? And I just thought that was so good. Um, mm. And if you're dealing with anxiety or, um, you know, these crazy, you know, that it's okay. It's okay. Even yep. if you're in the depths of it, you can just get, you know, um, yep. if, you can, mm. if you can, but if you can't, there's that too. And you can just be still and know that he's God and say, yeah, here I am. I need you to come get me. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And it may be years, you know, but we can, do you feel like this? We can have hope and that there's a, there's something coming from it. We're being prepared for something or there's a reason mm. for it. You feel that way? Yeah. You know, I do think there is, um, I do think there's some suffering that that uh, is inexplicable in this yeah, fallen, yeah. broken world. That that is nothing, nothing more than the fact that that um, that's just the condition of of the universe. Um, and sometimes seeking to find, seeking to apply meaning to it, can actually also be a symptom of OCD. Um, I remember my psychiatrist listening to me talk and he's like oh you like to construct meaning yes um that's part of your that's part of your uh compulsion maybe i guess or or mm -hmm. whatever and i was like oh i i hadn't really thought about that but um you know we can we can grasp so much to want it to i mean i do i do think um god uses all of it to, yeah. uh, god can god can wring good out of the worst things to to um, bring his glory and our good. So, um, but, but I, can, I, can, I can look sometimes really hard at things and go, I don't know why that happened. And, yeah. and I don't know that necessarily even God in like yeah. specifically said, this is, <laughs> I don't yeah. know. I don't know how his will works, but I, but I go, um, some of it still seems arbitrary and and go, well, I can allow for that too, just because the world is broken. <laughs> yeah. So I forget what the original question was, but um, about yeah. suffering and, and yeah, and, well, and I this do is think, the purpose in it. Yes. Yeah. I know what you I, mean. I, I do think that um, there, there's nothing wasted in any of God's economy. And, and if, um, if we're, if we're, if we're bringing our suffering to him, he's going to, he's going to use it to shape us and, and, and lead us to hope. Um, I have, to, I do believe that for yeah. sure. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That is good. Yeah. Um, and I, and I, I like that. I like that you talked about the armor of God and how 
there's just so much grace there, you know? Yeah. There's so much grace there. And um, grace is so good. One thing, um, and I don't, I don't want to take too much time um, on talking about my experience, but, you know, it, I needed to know at where I was at. Like, you grew up in church, you know? Yeah, yeah. I was like a, just a mess, you know? And so I, I needed that. I needed to know um, my sin that God was saved, that mm. Jesus paid for, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I needed to know that. And that was yeah. one good thing that came from being obsessed with uh, the end of the world. <laughs> and mm. Um, mm. I was obsessed at the time with um, if God spoke in dreams. Huh. Because I had a dream and I was terrified that something would happen to my son. Um, uh, I was terrified. Mm. I was obsessed with it. Um, mm. And so I read the Bible all the way through. And mm. I had never done mm. that before. Wow. I know. And so in that, just going through the Old Testament. And then when I get to that, John um, Luke 7, when it said a woman in the town who had lived a sinful life. Mm. And that was me. And mm. at the end, he says, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Mm. like a command just wow go in peace and that's yeah, just yeah. so much grace yeah and, um and like you say with the power you know something could still happen to my son you know but it doesn't rule my life you yeah, know yeah. um and these are the things that mm. rule your life with ocd <laughs> yes 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 yeah one of my one of my favorite pieces of the the armor has become the the helmet of salvation yeah um because I realized that, um, you know, we normally think about the, the helmet with, you know, whatever arrows or bullets are flying at us. And, but I was thinking about how a patient in the hospital who's had a brain trauma of some kind and they've had to, you know, maybe remove a skull plate or whatever. And the doctors yeah. put them in a, in a helmet. And I was like, you know, the helmet is for caring for us for everything that's going on inside our heads as well as outside our heads coming at us. And that was a real comfort to me to go, God has me. He he knows what's in my brain. And and I can I can I can trust that that helmet to hold it together. And um when that's my it. When my oldest son was in eighth grade, he really wanted to go snowboarding. And so I took him up for a lesson, which is crazy because I'm like so unathletic. Like I'm, yeah. but I wanted this father-son bonding time. So we we go up and, and take a lesson and, and then, you know, do fine on the bunny hills. And so then they take us up on the slopes and I'm kind of like just butter sliding my way down uh, to the bottom. And I do that a few times. And finally, it's the last run of the day. He wants to go one more time. And I'm like, okay. And I should have stopped because I knew my legs were not good. And I, no. um, I start down and I, I end up doing just this spectacular end over end, uh, fall right under the oh, chair. Yeah. So everybody could see me. And I, 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 you know, Out of literally body saw stars kind of thing smacked. Right. Me. But I, but I was wearing a helmet and I thought, mm you know, the helmet couldn't make me a better snowboarder and it couldn't prevent the fall from happening. That wasn't its job. And, but it, it saved my life. And sometimes we feel like we, we act like the armor of God should prevent us from ever having to go through things. And that's not what it's there to do. It's there to, yeah. it's there to save us and protect us and stuff, but, but we're still going to have to go through. From the adversary. Yeah. Right. Isn't it with the spiritual adversaries? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because there's those yeah. little, the blotters. Right, right, yes, yes, the blotters. Damn the blotters, we hate yeah, them. Exactly. <laughs> yes. That's so good. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that. okay, I do want to bring it back because it's um, 820 and I know that, it's not 820 for you, it's 820 right, for right, me right. out here. <laughs> and I'm in the future. Uh, yes. <laughs> so I don't want to take your time, but, um, and I know you have to go, but I do want to tie it up with that, you know, you have OCD and I truly believe that it's one of the reasons that this is such a good book because of the way that you see the world, the way that you're able to, um, you know, think of things like that, like the, the helmet, 
You know what I mean? Like not everybody thinks of the helmet of salvation like that. That was brilliant, you know? Um, and just um, even assigning meaning to things, you know? I mean, that's a good sign of, I mean, it's a good side of assigning meanings sure, to things, sure. you know? Yep, it's yep. just um, making a fun story and with many mm -hmm. layers. And um, this is such a, a beauty for ashes in a way, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. everyone's gonna love it. Um, and and I forgot to ask you what the blotters and the ink were, because I, oh. <laughs> I, I have my idea. So we yeah. have, um, I have you for nine minutes. So we okay. have the magical ink of the story and the ink is actually kind of the big deal of the story. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, the main character that's not a character. The main character that's not a character. Exactly. And then we have the wicked blotters. Yeah. Yeah. So in your mind, what are the ink and what are the blotters? Yeah, you know, and, and uh, it's it's interesting to talk about them because I'm I I'm not trying to create an allegory in the story, so I don't want to I don't want to make people you know define it too tightly. I'm trying to trying to evoke or kind of I, I guess writing as a as a Christian. Yeah, I, I have I have my sort of Christian lens that I write through, but I, but I also go. You wouldn't have to be a Christian to read this book and, you don't. You and would, enjoy think, it. Yes. You, you would know. never, I mean, besides that Marcus is a pastor. Right. Which I mean, actually he was based on a real person too. Really? Uh, yeah. Cause there was a guy who was friends with, not friends with, but a, um, a vicar in the UK who uh, he, he edited the, a, a publication for the Anglican church that C.S. Lewis would write for. Okay. And he also, he started a comic book called The Eagle. Oh, wow. Uh, and so he kind of became the, the, the model for, for Marcus. Okay. Um, That's awesome. But anyway, Fun but fact. yeah, back to the, the ink, I think, you know, for me, what I, what I envisioned the ink really as the, source behind all creativity of course the creator of the universe is is the is the source of all creativity and and so for me the the ink kind of i wanted it to at least um uh suggest i guess not necessarily represent but suggest either you know the spirit of god or the word of god uh that that the things that we the things that are said about what the word of god does yeah you can say about ink i didn't want to do i didn't want to have any description of ink that would that would counter yeah that but that's that's just my that's what i thought too yeah yeah I think, so, yes um, I love but that. it's not you know it's not doesn't necessarily have to be that i had to um uh my my agent worked, you know, to really not have me uh, anthropomorphize the ink too much of yeah. making it a good job of have it. too much of a will in the whole thing. But um, yeah, yeah, it could so be the, um, uh, like create, create creativity, you know, right, right, yes. right, which is yeah. important. Imagination. Yep, yep. yep. But yes, Interesting. I, I I heard uh, OCD once described as a disorder of the imagination. So uh, I think that- it makes uh, great stories. Yes, I hope so. You know? well, it does. Well, I mean, this doesn't seem like OCD, but just, you know, the crazy stuff that goes on with it. Mm. You know, you can't make yep, that yep. stuff up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, for sure. So, oh yeah. my gosh, JD, this has been so fun. And I don't, I, it's almost time. I'm, I'm doing so good. Um, you are doing great. Oh my gosh, this is such a great conversation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, I hope you come back. Me on. Oh, that was awesome. Appreciate so, it. So everyone, you have to get the Inkwell Chronicles this Christmas. It's Christmas. So um, this has to be in the stocking or in a present for your eight to 12 year old or you. I'm 41 right, right. for this book. So, all right, JD, where can they find you? Uh, my website is jdpeabody.com. I'm on Instagram at jdpeabodybooks and uh, wherever books are sold. So Fantastic. All right. Well, you have a good one. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you.